CNBC Today. Uh, Brian Seitel with you here again. It's Thursday, November the 16th. Um, uh, was good to be here with you out of New York and had a good week in the city and, and, and all that. And David was slated to be here with you today, but had uh, uh, some further meetings. So I'm, I'm going to stand in here. Um, but the, kind of a flat day, really, on the market. So a bit quiet. We actually were uh, about flat in the morning and then sort of traded down about 170 points mid-morning. There was some weaker than expected economic data and markets ju just took the steam out of stocks a bit. Um, it did put a rally in the bond market. The 10-year was down nine basis points on the day, closed at 445. And uh, again, having quiet or flat or, or non-volatile days following a really pretty big move up is a good thing. It bodes well for markets. It's what you want to see. You want to see consolidation. You want to see sort of an active trading uh, area around a certain range uh, to support where things have moved. Um, and it does speak to inflation really coming down. And, and this week, the numbers that we got were, was quite a few of them and data points. We had CPI come in that was much lower than expected. We had PPI come in lower than expected. Again, those are two of our main inflation readings come in far cooler than, than we thought. We had retail sales negative and weak um, yesterday. So consumer giving back a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit weaker. And then uh, 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 the largest retail in the country today after earnings, and you can probably guess who that is, uh, cited uh, not inflationary pressures and in dealing with higher wages and things, but the opposite, disinflationary pressures. So they're a retailer selling goods and the prices have to be lower in order to attract buyers. So it's, it's kind of a dis disinflationary, a lower amount of inflation happening in that retailer. And then today, we had jobless claims that came in high, a little higher than expected. We were expecting 220, we got 230,000. So when you con combine all of those, say five or six data points, every one of them is speaking to lower inflation, cooler economy, those, thing, those types of things. And that's what the Fed wants to see to feel good about where they're taking rates. And maybe it is just sort of porridge is just right. Maybe they didn't overdo it. We won't get a slowdown, but time will tell. Technically, you know, unemployment has gone from 3.4 to 3.9 and, you know, a 50 basis where a half a point move uh, has usually led to a contraction, but that's not what we're seeing today. So all that to say, the, um, the Philly Fed index was um, still negative, but it was better than expected. We were expecting a negative 11 print on it. We got a negative 5.9. So not uh, a whole lot to report there other than just a little better, but still negative. The, um, you know, energy, this in, in kind of goes. So, so if I painted all these things together, you had uh, you know, a little bit more unemployment or a little bit more jobless, both uh, initial claims and continuing. You had obviously slower inflation, all those sorts of things. Um, uh, you also have energy that pulled back quite a bit. Energy oil was down about 5% today. And again, that's on weak consumer perception of, of demand, really. Um, and so, and then you have a bond market rally. So if you painted all those things together, it, they're just pointing towards a, an economic soup of, of, of things slowing a little bit and cooling down. The Biden uh, meeting with Xi Jinping today was, um, or I'm sorry, yesterday really, ended yesterday. They, they agreed on some things. I, I sort of felt like it was a little par for the course that basically agreed that climate change is bad and they should address it, that fentanyl is bad. And then we, we agree that, you know, we don't we want to curb the uh, exportation of it. Um, there was some agreement on communication with the militaries and uh, the use or, or controlled use or non-use of artificial intelligence with military applications, things like that. There really wasn't any big headway made on big issues like trade between the two biggest economies in the world and, and, and so forth and anything on Taiwan either. There wasn't a whole lot of headway made with uh, agreeing or disagreeing on Taiwan. Biden uh, reaffirmed the one China policy that the U.S. has had, which has great language inside of it. And China said that we should stop shipping arms there and that it's, you know, Taiwan is essentially a de facto part of China. Blah, blah, blah. So same, same, same old story there. So I'd say communication was a good thing. Um, not a whole lot came out of it, but, um, but, the, but it's more market friendly than otherwise. You know, in other words, not talking. The Senate actually passed the bill that was sent from the House, uh, which is good to keep the government open. So we've got a fun, funding, funded government here for the next couple of months into the new year. And then we'll just kick the can down the road and worry about how we're going to figure it out then. But at least it'll be open through the holidays, right? Okay, um, 
so all that to say, you know, on a quiet day like this, I'm going to end it there for the day. It's always good being with you. Um, I said this yesterday, but I didn't know I was going to be with you today. So I'll say it again today. If I don't hear from you, I wish you all a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. And, uh, and uh, reach out anytime with any questions. That's what I'm here for. With that, I'll send it off and have a good evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm.